leave this one on the back burner for a second. All right. Each poll is one question. Yeah, I guess we took care of this one. User can comment on a poll multiple times. Comment entity. One user can have how many comments? Many. Many. Each comment is associated with how many users? Just one. Comment is associated with how many polls? One poll. One. Each poll can have how many comments? Many. Many. Think this is my ERD. Again, this is an ERD entity relationship diagram, which, cleverly enough, shows the entities, and it shows the relationships between them, and it shows the cardinality. Now, again, you can make this more elaborate. I don't indicate that some of these things are required. Pretty much, many of the relationships are required, but it's not required that the user has to comment on it. So there's all kinds of ways you can show that kind of information on an ERD, but we're going to stick with this. Now here's the one thing that's, that's troublesome in this. We have all the requirements done except for this one. There's nothing on that diagram that tells me that a user can only vote once per poll. How can I implement that? A compound primary key. I can make a compound primary key. So we've already said that in the poll table, there's a poll ID, which is a primary key. There is the text of the question. There is category ID. In the category, there's a category ID, which is a primary key. There is the category name. All right. In the user, let's say there's a user ID, primary key. Maybe their email address. It should probably be a unique index, I would think, because you wouldn't want someone registering with the same email address. Maybe their first name, last name. <laughs> Do we need like a possible answers? Yeah, you're right. We missed that. That that was the one thing we're missing from there. Poll has so many possible answers. So we'll have to we'll tap that in. Let me finish writing the attributes here. All right, comment is gonna have a Well, we'll leave that one. Let's talk about the vote first before we worry about the, the possible answers. Or actually, we need the possible answers to talk about the vote. So let's go in and add that here. A poll question can have many possible answers. Each possible answer is only associated with one pair. <coughs> Possible answer is going to have cleverly enough a possible answer ID and a question ID and then the answer. So what's going to be in the vote? The vote has one vote is associated with one possible answer and what was associated with a one possible answer a possible answer is associated with possibly multiple votes so what's going to be in the vote table it'll be this has worked for us so far let's make a vote i or no As was suggested by Chad, the key to this table is going to be the user ID and the question ID as a compound primary key. What's different about a compound primary key? Well, all the same rules apply. Every row has to have one. The combination has to be unique. And actually, 
essentially when I say every row has to have one, every row has to have both parts or all three parts to it. How does this guarantee that I've achieved this constraint, that the user can only have one vote per poll? How does that guarantee that? Just in English language terms not database terms. Well, just because the primary key has to be unique. Primary key has to be unique. You couldn't have, you know, the same, the, the same combination of user ID and question you, ID. You can't have the same combination of user ID and question ID. So in other words, for a given question, there could only be one row in the table for a given user ID. So that guarantees that a person can't vote in a poll twice. Because if they tried to vote in the same poll twice, the database would try to insert another row with the same question ID, the same user ID, and when it tried to insert that row, it wouldn't be able to because the primary key has to be unique. So, if I was user 1, And question one was Android or iPhone. Then in the vote table, the primary key of user ID and poll ID could only exist there once. And I would have whatever my vote was. If I tried to vote again on that poll, it would try to insert another row that had that combination, but it can't because that combination is already there and it would blow up. We, uh, the, the one thing that, that made me think of is we said we were going to display a results page too. So you would probably want to record what answer they actually voted. Yeah, for. exactly. All right. Good point. We'll come to that. That was, that was the other thing that we, we talked about, display results. Exactly. The results. Uh, again, the, the statement was made is we could, we could, when they pulled up the poll again, we could not give them the vote button or not give them the vote options, all right, if they've already voted. That would be cool. That's something that's not really in the database, though. That is, that is the particular user interface. We could simply not show those things, which is probably the better way to do it, right? Or maybe even display a message, you've already voted and maybe give them an option to change that vote if they wanted to. Or we could let them try to vote and then laugh at them when <laughs> it doesn't work and say, ha, you already voted on this, too bad, all right? From a usability perspective, obviously one of the first two solutions would be superior, all right? The database, though, doesn't care. On the database level, it's enforcing constraints. How you choose to write the UI to let people interact with the database, that's a whole other ball of wax. Now, we're also going to need the possible answer ID here. Isn't this what we did? Like, wouldn't there not be a relationship between poll and vote? Because then you could actually have a question with the wrong answer, or actually not matching answer. Yeah, actually, you're right. The same thing I said about the uniqueness applies, but you're right. It would be between this and this. And the primary key then would be possible answer ID, question ID, and that's what the foreign key would be. Thank you. That's a good point. The reason that you don't do it that way is because you could potentially, the database would allow someone to put in an answer for, that wasn't a valid answer for that particular question, that was a valid answer for some other question. So actually, and you might say, well, don't we still have that relationship? No, we can derive that relationship by saying, I know someone has voted in this if they have a valid answer in the vote table for that.
And that's a good question. Um, do I need a relationship, let's say, between category and vote? Do I need a relationship between category and vote? between user and category. I might want to know all the people that are interested in technology. So I might want to look for all the people that are interested in technology. You have it in a roundabout way. Right? You have it in a roundabout way. And the technical term for that is a derived relationship. In other words, if I want to see who was interested in technology, I would find the people that voted in polls for technology and chose one of the possible answers so that they voted in a poll that related to technology, I'd find the people. So I could derive that relationship. So you don't necessarily implement every relationship you can dream up. Just like there is a relationship between a poll and the vote. But you get that through, this would actually say poll ID, you get that through the possible answer table, which is the point that was made up. One thing I was going to mention before is I have accidentally been sometimes saying poll, sometimes saying question. All right? And fortunately for us, this is a simple enough example that, that you guys, you know, probably after the first time or two is like, uh, he means poll when he said question. All right? That can actually be an issue in real life systems if people use different terminologies for the same things. All right? So it never hurts to ask to clarify. For example, uh, the one job, the job that I was talking about before, uh, in that particular job, sometimes manufacturers were called principals, other times manufacturers were called manufacturers. And I remember working there for the first good period of time, it was really confusing to me. Thinking like, whoa, they said pull up a list of manufacturers, but they're looking at the principal table. Is that wrong? You know? And it got to be really confusing. Well, fortunately for me, I wasn't in a position where I could do any damage. All right? I was just maintaining old stuff, so I worked through it. But if you're designing something new, particularly people at different levels of an organization, sometimes we'll call it one thing versus uh, another. Because it's just a way that they know that, you know. I'll uh, give you a good example, you know. If I'm working in a warehouse, the people we buy our stuff from might be called suppliers. If I am working in accounts payable, the people we buy our stuff from might be called vendors. Vendors are suppliers, <laughs> all right. Therefore, it's important to sort of know that. And if you're ever not sure, ask, you know. Um, you might get, you know, the worst will happen is, though, am I lucky? It's like, well, that's obvious. Well, obviously it's not obvious. Obviously it's not obvious. Well, <laughs> it may not be obvious, all right? So obvious. It's obvious to them, all right? But it no, won't necessarily be obvious to you or anyone else. Um, I think I have one last thing. I'm going over time. Uh, I, I apologize for that. Uh, but I, I do want to wrap up this one thought so we can sort of start clean on, on, uh, on, a thir on a Tuesday. All right. If you remember my results page, and thanks for bringing that up, I indicated that there would be percentages. You know, that so many percent voted for iPhone, so many percent voted for Android, so many percent voted for other. Where are the percentages in this ERD? Your applications are figuring They're not. Percentage. It should figure it out, all right? In other words, we can, that's another case of a derivable field, all right? If we know all the votes for a particular possible answer, and we know how many possible answers there were and how many votes there were, we can calculate the percent. We can always go from a higher level of detail to a lower level of detail. We can always take all the votes and summarize them to show the number of votes, the percentages of votes the difference between the top vote getter and the bottom vote getter. We can show whatever we want to if we, show, if we store the full detail. If we stored summary data, like if we stole percentages for each possible answer, well then we could never go back and count the number of votes. All right? 
Or we could never allow someone to go back and change their votes because we've lost that information. So in general, you don't want to store derived fields. You want to store the full detail and any summary that you want to glean from that, you summarize via the application. All right. Questions about this? Um, we'll do something else on Tuesday, all right? I'm not, I'm not sure what at this point. Um, because talking about database theory, um, believe it or not, there's people in the world that don't find it quite as fascinating as I do, all right? I might want to get into the .NET side of things and say, okay, we got this database, we've designed it, let's actually make a couple tables and let's write some queries that we use within our page, just to keep bouncing back and forth between a little bit of database area, a little bit of ASP.NET. So that's probably what we'll do on whenever we meet again, Tuesday. All right, see you over in lab. Does anyone have a thumb drive I can use?